Missouri's newest attorney general, newly minted in this last election. Josh Holly's been coming on the show now for years. Good morning, Mr. Attorney General. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me. So this week, earlier in the week, you uh, made a big push. This, this is, I think this is one of your, your first big pushes, and I couldn't have been uh, any happier with it because this is a uh, issue that doesn't get a lot of attention and should, human trafficking. What did you do, and tell us about it. You know, on Monday, McGraw, I announced a series of new regulations that I am issuing that use our consumer protection laws in the state of Missouri to target traffickers. And here's how they work. We have made, under these regulations, businesses that pose as a front for trafficking rings, that's now illegal. And we can go after these businesses with consumer protection laws. That means we can go after them with fines, with penalties, and also criminal penalties. It's a felony now to use a business as a front for trafficking. And we also made, under these regulations, uh, I made illegal arrangements known as debt bondage, which is a favorite of traffickers. That's when they promise their victim uh, a gift or a job, and then they say, well, I'll give it to you, but you've got to work for me in order to pay down your debt. That's illegal under these regulations, under our consumer protection statute. So it's a new approach to try and go after traffickers, to open a new front in the war on trafficking, and we're hugely excited about it. So uh, explain, I, I, I understand that that's good, but take us back a step. Why is it okay before you did this for a business to be a front for a human trafficking ring? Isn't that already illegal on its face? Why did you have to in, invoke these new uh, rules? You know, trafficking is illegal in the state of Missouri under our criminal laws. But here's the thing. Trafficking is often hard to prove under using traditional criminal laws. And here's why. Number one, it's hard to investigate. These crimes usually are spread out across multiple cities, often multiple states. So it's hard for local law enforcement uh, to investigate them effectively. It's so resource intensive. And then many, many victims, maybe most victims, are not willing to come forward and to testify against their traffickers. And that makes sense because they are, by definition, as a victim, they have been coerced. They have been forced. Uh, many of them are in fear for their lives. You know, for example, McGraw, on Monday when we announced these new regulations and our other efforts, I did it from a safe house there in St. Louis. This safe house, we couldn't disclose the location of it officially. And why not? Because the women, the young women who live in this safe house, they are in danger of, for their lives. Well, that makes it hard for law enforcement oftentimes to prove up these cases using traditional criminal law. So what we have done is looked for a new and creative way to go after traffickers, consumer protection laws that regulate unfair and deceptive business, tra business practices, easier we think to prove the case against traffickers more direct another tool we hope in law enforcement's uh toolkit to go after these traffickers and let me say two more things McGraw. we also announced a new unit in the attorney general's office of investigators and prosecutors who will go after these crimes statewide and i announced a new statewide statewide task force that i will chair bringing together law enforcement and bringing together the nonprofit sector across the state to tackle this problem together. Has this always been around, or is this something new? Why are we seeing more human trafficking now? You know, it, it has been around, but it's getting worse. And one of the reasons it is getting worse is because traffickers think they can do it without penalty. Yeah, there was a major study recently done in which traffickers uh, themselves were interviewed by the researchers. And uh, something that they, the researchers consistently found, the Urban Institute did the study, something the researchers consistently found is that traffickers said, you know, we, we know it's hard to prove these, these crimes. We know that this is a hard crime to detect and to prove, and so we think basically we can get by with it. We think it's worth the risk. Well, we want to send the message that in the state of Missouri, that is no longer true. Don't come to our state. Don't commit your crimes in our state. We are going to go after you, and we will use every tool at our disposal to do so. So it's one thing going after the the uh, uh, the the people who are the 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 I don't want to call them pimps or whatever you call them, whatever that 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 word is. But you're going after those guys who are taking the women and holding them against their will. But you don't have that side if you don't have the people who are looking for it. Are you going after the people who are hiring these? these people well it is the, the the folks who are who will pay 
uh, for um, sex. I mean, who will who will buy the labor of these women who have been coerced into trafficking? That is illegal under Missouri law, and we stand ready, both in the task force and in my unit in the attorney general's office, to aid our prosecutors around the state in going after the folks who who purchase. Uh, these young women. It, it is absolutely illegal and they need to be punished. And we are going to use these new regulations and every tool that we need to, McGraw, to make it costly for traffickers to try and commit their crimes and to liberate these young women. And I wanted to say one other thing. People need to know this is a problem all over our state. This isn't a crime that happens somewhere else. It happens in St. Louis. It happens in Kansas City. It happens in Springfield. It happens everywhere in our state, and it's a growing problem. The National Trafficking Hotline reported over 2,000 calls, reports of human trafficking in our state in the last few years. Last year, 135 trafficking-related prosecutions in the state of Missouri, and it's way under-enforced and under-reported. Big problem. That's why we're going after it so hard. Josh Hawley with us, the Attorney General, announcing steps he's taking to uh, to combat human trafficking. I want to ask you, uh, Attorney General Josh Hawley, that you keep talking about this consumer protection. Uh, the House budget, it's been uh, reported, has cut some $7 million from that fund, and you're quoted as saying that that's the wrong way to go to help fight this problem. That was a terrible mistake. The House Budget Committee uh, slashed consumer protection funding last week that would that supports the no-call list in the state of Missouri and also funds law enforcement actions protecting veterans, seniors, and our trafficking units. Now, I'm happy to report, McGraw, that a day or two ago, the full House restored that funding, which we are delighted about. That was the right decision. Uh, you know, the Budget Committee made a, made a bad choice, a choice that really would have hurt the state of Missouri. Uh, but the uh, the full house has corrected that now, and so I applaud them in reversing that raid on the consumer protection funds. And look, we're going to be vigorous advocates. My job is to protect the people of Missouri and to be an advocate, and I'm going to do that in every forum that's necessary, the, the legislature, and everywhere else that's needed to make sure that the people of Missouri are protected. And that's one of the reasons we are so serious about getting tough on trafficking. Too many children and youth in our state are at risk, potentially thousands. We've got to do something about it, and we are. Uh, Josh Hall, you said it's it's every corner of the state. Is it true, this is a question, not a statement, is it true that you could be walking past a hotel or a house in your neighborhood and not know that it is housing some type of sex ring? Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely possible. It's very, very possible. And, he, and here's the other thing. You could be sitting uh, uh, next to a family, uh, you know, in, in uh, heck, at church, uh, where the, the young women in that family, and I keep, I keep referring to females because the truth is, McGraw, of the 4.5 million people worldwide who are trapped in sex trafficking, 4.5 million, 98% are female. So this is a crime that is targeted at women, especially vulnerable women. And it happens over the Internet. Uh, young girls are lured by predators on the internet who lie to them, who promise them gifts, who say that they want to, they have a job for them, and they want to show them this or that, and then they're forced into trafficking. And so it happens in, in every corner of the state. It, it happens to girls in our schools, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, you name it. So this is an issue that is not confined to any one area. It's, it's all over our state. It's all over our country. And it's going to take the efforts of all of us to end this epidemic. Uh, yeah, and and I, I just, you know, you, you, you just feel so bad for these girls who sort of get swept up in this. You hear all sorts of horrible stories. But the men, too, right? If the, It's almost like, you know, the, the illegal drug dealer wouldn't be there if somebody wasn't doing the drugs. The men who, who, who prostitute these women or who, who, who pay for these women— you know, you're the attorney general. You decide how to prosecute them, but, you know, they should be strung up and, and you know, have their skin peeled off if, um, for all I care. But, I mean, it, it, there's a market for it, and that's even more criminal, right? I mean, that they wouldn't be doing this unless there was a market for these women, which just breaks your heart. You know, you have you put your finger right on the, the source of the problem, my girl. The, tr the simple truth is, and it's an uncomfortable truth, but the truth is that we would not have any trafficking if there were not demand. But there is demand, and the demand is that men, and it is overwhelmingly men, men will pay in order to purchase the labor of these young women and girls. And so part of what we have to do is we have to change the culture 
that tends to say to men, especially young men in our society, always this is just all fun and games. Uh, soliciting is a, a prostitute is no big deal. They're all in it voluntarily. That's just not true. Overwhelmingly, the women who are in the commercial sex industry have been coerced or forced into it. So we, we've got to have a cultural change. Uh, and part of the way we affect that change is we go after the men who are purchasing uh, this, uh, this illegal labor, and we go after the traffickers, and we make it really darn hard for them uh, to uh, ply their, their illegal enterprise, uh, to ply their illegal trade in our state, and that's what we're going to do. Missouri Attorney General Josh Hawley, you're always welcome here, sir. Get back to work, and thanks for checking in. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. You got it. Josh Hawley, ladies and gentlemen, a um, new attorney general announcing some uh, new regulations to combat human trafficking. 135 uh, cases last year, and it is woefully underreported. Uh, just breaks your heart. Uh, 923 here, Big 550 KTRS. Let me tell you about uh, Harry's Razor.